Hey guys, hope you're doing good today. Um, wanted to share a few things about Ezekiel chapter 33 today. Uh, the beginning of uh, chapter 33 uh, speaks of a uh, about a watchman uh, on the wall. Uh, this translation, which is the voice translation, uh, speaks of a lookout. And uh, here's what the passage says in, in uh, the voice translation. If I wage war against the country and the people appoint one of their own to be a lookout, and if the lookout sees an army advancing towards the land and blows a trumpet to warn the people, and if someone hears the alarm and ignores it, allowing that army to come and capture him, that is, then in, it is his own fault for not taking appropriate action. His blood will be on his own hands. If he had done something, he could have saved his life and the lives of others. But if a lookout sees an army advancing and does not sound the alarm to warn the people, and if some are captured or killed, then their blood will be on the hands of the lookout. Uh, I would encourage you to take a look at that passage at some point, and I'm not going to try to remove any of the teeth of, of that passage. Um, he's, the Lord is speaking to Ezekiel and appointing him um, as, a, as a watchman, as a lookout for, um, for Israel. And you know, as we read from the major prophets, as well as Ezekiel, that you know, they really don't listen to Ezekiel, but Ezekiel continues to tell them what the deal is. Uh, because he sees, he's, he, he's looking out. And so the thing about this passage that um, I want to talk about with us today is we've been talking about this kind of place of the bunker, this place of um, place of prayer, this place of it, it, the heavens, if you will, this place that Christ says that he's created for us, that he was going to prepare a place for us, this place of uh, being seated with Christ in heavenly places, that kind of concept. If, we consider this positioning in our lives, uh, we begin to recognize that, um, kind of back to what we were talking about in the very beginning about mission, uh, we begin to realize that um, not only do we begin to have the capacity and the authority and the power to tear down strongholds in our own lives, to conquer sin, to conquer addictions, to conquer heartache, to co conquer wounds, we would only have that for our own lives. But we um, are gifted to take care of the people around us. We're gifted to see what's going on with them. We're gifted to pray for them, to pray on their behalf, to, to, to kind of pray down a path for them for that day or for that week, for that month. When people come to us troubled, we're able to kind of like see which direction we should pray for them. And so, and that's all a, a gifting, a New Testament gifting that's given to all believers. Uh, there's a concept in Peter that, um, and really it's a New Testament concept in general, that there's the, the priesthood of all believers. That not only is there a single Ezekiel or a single Jeremiah or Isaiah whom um, is called to see and to be a lookout for everybody else, uh, but we're all given that opportunity to be priests. We're all given that opportunity to, uh, to walk in the, in the Spirit and to uh, wage war on behalf of the Spirit. Um, you know, as we talked about with um, with James in recent weeks, you know, I, I said something kind of in passing that that nobody entered into the early church without being uh, without going through James. That somehow James um, had positioned himself uh, in prayer to allow access for so many people to come to know uh, the Lord, to come into the kingdom of God, and um, and so it's. Um, you know, and, and it's that being a witness thing. It's that thing that um, made them want to, um, made them want to kill multiple people because they were being witnesses um, of Christ and witnesses of the kingdom. And so, um, there's one. Uh, there was a random movie back in 2008 that I remember seeing uh, called 10,000 BC. I don't necessarily recommend the movie. I don't remember it being incredibly great, but there was a moment of clarity um, towards. I want to say towards the end of the movie, there was a conversation about what this young man, the main character, what he was going to do with his life, how he was going to um, progress. And uh, there's a few things that were said that I found really interesting. It says, um, this was said to the main character, it says, A good man draws a circle around himself and care for, cares for those within, his women, his children, and uh, in the scene they're like drawing on the ground. Um, other men draw a larger circle and bring within their bring within their brothers and sisters, but some him 
Some men have a great destiny. They must draw around themselves a circle that includes many, many more. Your father was one of those men. You must decide for yourself whether you are as well. And so I guess my, my point, my, my challenge in all this is that, um, first of all, before I challenge us, you know, there, there's no greater pleasure than to help others along in this journey. There's no greater gift than to know that you're sharing something that God has given you for another person or something that you've learned. There's no, there's no greater gift for me than to share what I'm sharing now about the things that I've learned about these passages of Scripture. The, I, these things aren't mine to, to hold on to or to earn any favor from. These things are, are, um, are, are God's kingdom being established, and I'm humbled to be a part of it. It's interesting how as we develop some type of prayer lives and some type of uh, devotional life, how quick and easy, um, you know, the church of our day will promote us to be some type of leaders and push us ahead of everyone else. And, you know, and I appreciate the sentiment of that, but I think we have to be wary of, of that, that, that what we're talking about, this kind of lifestyle we're talking about is, uh, it should be the norm. It should be the norm of those who are walking in the kingdom and, uh, it should not be the, the rarity and it doesn't, de definitely doesn't need to be heralded as something unique. Like this is the absolutely the baseline of what it means to be a Christian, and it's the the baseline of what it means to be successful in His kingdom. Um, so I would challenge you. I would, I'm challenging us to consider who God has put in our circle. To consider, um, are we are we looking out for them? Are, are we being a watchman for those people around us? Are we able to? Um, are, are we praying for them? Are, are we are we seeing uh, helping them see ahead of what's going on in their lives? Um, yeah, I, I would challenge you to consider that. Consider who's in your circle. Who has God placed in your mission field? Be it at your workplace, uh, around your home, your family, your relatives. Um, yeah. So let's pray. Um, Father, thank you that you have imparted your spirit into us. You've imparted your uh, your spirit whom is uh, all-knowing and whom is wise and whom is powerful and authoritative. And uh, you've given us the ability to partner with you through that spirit and to help create uh, your kingdom here on earth. And so we, we just want to um, say yes to you today, God. We want to say yes to this calling to um, to be a lookout, to be a watchman for the people around us, uh, for, to, to not only look after ourselves, but look after our neighbors, Father God. Uh, we just want to take up that responsibility and be willing to, uh, to walk in it, be willing to take part in it, Father God, take part in your kingdom. God, I pray that your, um, your peace and your power would rest on my friends, uh, that your uh, perspective would... Um, continue to descend upon them and uh, that you would protect them as they as they walk out your uh, your calling in their lives father we we bless you and we love you in christ's name